Madam Secretary, do you disagree with me that a simple phone call to those evacuees to determine what happened wouldn't have, wouldn't have ascertained immediately that there was no protest? I mean, that, that, was, that was a piece of information that could have been easily, easily obtained well, but, but Senator, within, yeah, within hours, if not days. Senator, I, you know, when you're in these positions, the last thing you want to do is interfere with any other process well, that's, going I, I, I on, realize, number one. I realize that's, number I realize two, that's a good excuse. Number two, at, well, no, it's the fact. Number two, I would recommend highly you read both what the ARB said about it and the classified ARB because even today there are questions being raised. Now, we have no doubt they were terrorists, they were militants, they attacked us, they killed our people. But what was going on and why they were doing what they were doing? No, 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 no. Is still, I, 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 is still again, un again, we no. were misled that there were supposedly protests and then something sprang out of that, an assault sprang out of that, and that was easily but ascertained I, that that was not the fact. But, but and the American know, people could have known that within days, and, and they they didn't know that. With all due respect. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest, or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again, Senator. Now, honestly, I will do my best to answer your questions about this, but the, the fact is that People were trying in real time to get to the best information. The IC has a process, I understand, going with the other committees to explain how these talking points came out. But, you know, to be clear, it is, from my perspective, less important today, looking backwards, as to why these militants decided they did it than to find them and bring them to justice, and then maybe we'll figure out what was going on in the meantime. Okay, thank you, Madam Secretary. Sorry, and it's wonderful to see you in good health and thank as you. combative as ever. <laughs> Four months or months after the Benghazi tragedy, it's a tragedy when we lose four brave Americans, there are many questions that are unanswered. And the answers, frankly, that you've given this morning are not satisfactory to me. Was, were you and the President made aware of the classified cable from Chris Stevens said that the United States consulate in Benghazi could not survive a sustained assault? Numerous warnings, including personally to me, about the security were unanswered or unaddressed. It took a CNN reporter looking through the consulate to find uh, Chris Stevens' last warning. When were you made aware of that cable? When were you made aware of the attack on the British uh, ambassador and the assassination attempts and the closing of the consulates there? And what actions were taken? What was the President's activities during that seven-hour period? On the anniversary of the worst attack in American history, September 11th, we didn't have Department of Defense forces available for seven hours. Two brave Americans died in the last hour. With all these warnings, all these things that took place, we didn't have a single Department of Defense asset apparently available to come to these rescue. I categorically reject your answer to Senator Johnson about well, we didn't ask these survivors who were flown to Ramstein the next day that, they, that this was not a spontaneous demonstration. To say that it's because an investigation was going on? The American people deserve to know answers, and they certainly don't deserve false answers. And the answers that were given the American people on September 15th by the ambassador of the United Nations were false. In fact, contradicted by the classified information which was kept out of the Secretary of the United Nations report, who, by the way, in the President's words, had nothing to do with Benghazi, which questions why she was sent out to start, to start with. Why is it that the administration still refuses to provide the full text of emails regarding the deletion of references to al-Qaeda and terrorism in the talking points. Why do we care? Because if the classified information had been included, it gives an entirely different version of events. 
to the American people. You're going to the American people and tell them what happened, then you ought to have your facts straight, including, the ambassador said, quote, Al-Qaeda is decimated and our consulates and embassies are secure. So here we are, four months later, and we still don't have the basic information. Now, if you want to go out and tell the American people what happened, you should at least have interviewed the people who were there. Instead of saying, no, we couldn't talk to them because an FBI investigation was going on. Uh, and by the way, as I said at the time, I just happened to be on one of those talk shows, people don't bring RPGs and mortars to spontaneous demonstrations. That's a fundamental. And of course, the president continued to say, days afterwards, September the 12th, he made a reference to act of terror, September 12th on 60 Minutes, too early to know, September 20th on Univision, we're still doing an investigation, September 24th on The View, we're still doing an investigation. The President of the United States, as late as September 24th, two weeks later, did not acknowledge that this was an act of terror conducted by people who were at least somehow connected to the Al-Qaeda. Finally, Madam Secretary, I strongly disagree with your depiction of what we did after Gaddafi fell. We did not provide the security that was needed. We did not help them with border security. We did not give them the kind of assistance that would have been necessary to help dismantle these militias that still to this day remain a challenge to democracy in Libya and freedom. You knew Chris Stevens very well. I knew him very well. I knew him on July 7th when I went to Libya to observe the elections. And at that time, on July 7th, he expressed to me his deep and grave concerns about security, particularly in Benghazi. And he continued to uh, communicate with the State Department, and I don't know who else was uh, privy to those cables, of his deep concern about the security there and the need for additional assistance. And I will argue with, with, with facts that after that uh, event took place, after the fall of Gaddafi, the, quote, soft footprint was partially, to some degree, responsible for the tragedy that that took place. The American people and the families of these four brave Americans still have not gotten the answers that they deserve. I hope that they will get them.